Good morning, everyone. It is currently 7.55 in Dayton, Ohio. I'm at Christine Jennings' house with Bart, and today we are leaving to go to the Rumble. Paul is all the way across the United States in California for the Masters Cup, but I decided to go to a different tournament, something off tour, so I'm gonna vlog it. Let's get started. It's hyping me up before my workout, okay? Get it, girl. Hi, vlog. Copyright now. Yeah, don't give me a copyright strike. Guys, this is the breakfast of champions, and I know that because Paul literally ate this the other day for breakfast. Just that? Yep. I would be so hungry. Christine recommended this place. It's called Core Life. So we're gonna check it out. Um, the Korean barbecue grain bowl is really good. Or the tuna poke bowl. That's it. Mm. Oh, really? Oh. Ooh, yum. What did you get? Yum. I built my own bowl. All right, we're going to do a janky taste test of this bowl. Hello, vlog. Oh, okay. You're probably wondering what I'm doing out in Illinois, and I can tell you because I've done this seven times now, so this time should be perfect. After DDO, Paul went to Illinois and he met with the Discraft guys and also Nate Heinold, and they had like a little bit of a Discraft meeting. We worked it out so that he left the Jeep here and then drove the RV to Michigan where he left it to get serviced for the next couple months. From Michigan, he flew down to Jacksonville Beach where I picked him up and we went and spent a few days together in Florida and then on Monday I dropped him off at the airport and he flew to Santa Cruz where he's competing in the Masters Cup. I drove north to Virginia, packed my stuff, said hello to everyone that I could in the three minutes that I was home. Then I drove six and a half hours to Dayton, Ohio where I met Bart and Christine. This morning Bart and Christine and I woke up and drove another six hours west to Peoria because Peoria is on the way to Moline, Illinois, where the Rumble is, and that's the A tier that I've signed up for. So it all kind of worked out. Um, I'm gonna spend a couple days here in Peoria, obviously after the tournament, and then I fly out Wednesday after the tournament to Dayton for the Hazy Shade Open, and then I go home for two weeks. So that's what our schedule looks like. It's a lot of moving parts. Um, obviously, I'm sad that I'm not with my husband, but this is life. Okay, I made it to the course. Look at all this sweat on my face. It is so hot. Um, I just changed in the porta potty. <sighs> I'm out of breath. There was a lot of bees. Um, I'm gonna go practice, and I'm not gonna record it because I've literally driven driven 18 hours in the last three days, and I just want to get my body back under me and not worry about this. So I will check in with you guys after practice, unless something cool happens. Yeah. Bart found my disc. I thought that it would be over here, and it was over here. Oh, hi, Christine. Um, I made it to my room, kind of exactly what I expected. I'm super thankful that I'm in a really nice air-conditioned hotel room. <sighs> I don't know, guys. I just feel, mentally, I feel sad and tired. I mean, it's been a really long past couple months and three days. It's kind of just the life that we live. So we're not always together holding hands on the beach. Sometimes we're apart for really long periods of time and we're three days into 30 days of long distance. So played the course, it went really well. It's my favorite kind of golf, like wooded golf, throwing farther than I ever have, which is good. But I just like kind of lonely. <laughs> so I'm gonna go to the store. I don't know what store. I'm gonna take a shower, going to unpack a little bit, and then I don't know what I'm gonna do. <laughs> but if I do something fun, I'll carry you guys with me. But if I don't, if I just hang out, then I guess I'll just see you guys tomorrow. Hey everyone, well, I'm about to braid my hair, get ready for practice, and then go get some coffee, have some breakfast. This is so silly looking. I did not realize that the Midwest got this hot and humid. I don't know why I never thought about it before, but. Here we are. Also, this car is not mine, and I really like organization, and look at this, look at this mess. <clears throat> like, this is my organization that I did yesterday. It's just like a box, extra discs and stuff, and I have like umbrella and rain gear in there so things don't warp, but hoping that I don't need to use that this week. 
but yeah, not as organized as I would prefer. <laughs> Vlog, Christine and I are about to flil film. We're about to film the party. Hi, Christine. Good morning, and welcome to tournament day two. So yesterday was the first round of the tournament. I ended up getting a blister and I just thought it was a blood blister and it was just gonna be really sore, but it was like, you know, you're gonna be sore for a little bit, but your hands will like toughen up, literally. So I started the tournament through a distance driver. I parked my upshot, super excited. I get a tap in birdie. Next hole, pure my drive, I'm parked again for birdie and I'm starting the tournament birdie birdie. And it feels really good because I, I had in my notes, like, these are attainable holes. But then we walk to the next hole. I step up and I have my line and I just throw it too high. It's downhill sloping um, hole. Well, it turns out early released it because my finger had split at that point. My blister had popped and so my body in just reaction to the pain opened my hand sooner than I needed it to. I had like a crisis, like an identity crisis on the course and I'm texting Paul and I feel so insecure. Am I not good enough? Am I not actually good? Why? Like, do I put in all of this practice and this time and effort and energy just to show up to the course and do absolutely nothing? Couldn't figure it out. I wasn't nervous. I wasn't like, am I overthinking? But guys, the whole time, it was my body's natural reaction to pain from my finger. I could throw only hyzers. On holes that I should be able to attack, I had to just throw hyzers, and it was really sad. Shot like 829 rated disc golf. It was really hard, and I just told myself, you are going to be in this position again someday where there is something physically wrong that's going on that's out of your control, and it's not enough to take you out of the tournament, but it's enough to get in your head and change your game and you are going to have to handle it like an adult. Paul kind of coached me through it a little bit from distance. He said that I should go to the store, get some tape, get some super glue. So I have been putting that on my finger. I've got layers of super glue and honestly guys, I'm scared. I don't think that I can throw today. I don't, th I think it's going to be the same situation. Paul says it'll feel better um, with the glue there and he does it all the time. <laughs> So I guess I trust him, but I don't know. I'm, and I don't want to show up today again with everything that I've done to get here and all the money that I've spent to be here and have to not play because of my finger. There's like four discs in my bag that I can throw right now, but it's gonna be fine because we're at Westlake and there's like no wind, which never happens and I shouldn't have said that all loud. It's gonna be great. <laughs> Here we go. guys, Christine and I are at lunch. We stopped at this really cute place. I'm gonna talk really fast because there's music going on in the background, but um, we stopped for lunch. It's amazing. I got ramen. I'm gonna eat this whole thing and then we can talk about my round. Okay, I'm gonna be completely honest for a second. I am really insecure about how this vlog's gonna come out. I'm just not having a good tournament. There's like a lot going on. Don't know like how you guys are gonna take to it. I chose to vlog this whole adventure because I thought it would be really fun and lighthearted and just like it hasn't been. I've played two rounds so far of this tournament. The first round was emotionally exhausting. The second round was today. It was a similar story. I wasn't expecting to not have like a spacious area to do warm ups. Like I don't really know what I was expecting. I have a lot of energy right now and I wanna like roll with it. I think it's because it's not 100 degrees out. My body's like, let's go. 
Yeah, so I just had something to eat. I'm gonna drink water, have a snack, and then I think I'm gonna go out to Camden. The sun should be setting in a couple hours, and I just wanna go through my discs and put some more glue on my finger. All right, I'm back at Camden. I've already put glue on my finger. It looks really gross, honestly. But I'm just gonna throw my bag. I'm gonna put in these baskets that are out here in these fields and just put in the work because I wanna come out here tomorrow at this course and just absolutely shred. I just figured something out with my form. Uh, with my approach shots, they've just been mentally all over the place. Um, not only have they been slipping out of my finger, which is weird, I haven't been able to control them. I have no confidence. And I remember something that Paul said was like, instead of reaching back or not reaching back at all, reach out. So like you reach out away from your body and then I'll show you, like I'll approach to this tree. that so I can give it a little bit more trust because it's gonna hyzer back in but still if I was putting to the tree that would be so easy to make upon further review of my form I'm trash <laughs> I think I've been focusing so much on other things that everything that felt good before I came to this tournament is gone. That's all right, that's why I'm here. So I'm gonna throw my discs a bunch in this field. It's gorgeous out, I absolutely love it. And then I'm gonna go home. Things are going pretty well for me on the course right now. I'm wearing my cool new team Discraft polo, but we just hit some backups. Uh, I did field work at this park yesterday. Look at this, yuck. I feel like I've gotten a hang of things and I just have accepted that my new max distance is like 240 feet. Um, so I've been playing the course that way and I have a lot more birdies than usual, a lot more pars. One of the bogeys that I do have right now, I'm sitting at two over, I think. And one of the bogeys is from Chaining Out, which was kind of the basket, not me. So I'm kind of happy with that. Lots of disc golf left, but this is what we're looking at. Just some backups. <sighs> Honestly, what the heck was even that? I'm like actually shocked. I hit cage for birdie on hole the first hole. I hit cage for birdie on the second hole. I made my birdie on the third hole. So I could have started out birdie, birdie, birdie. My finger felt great. I did a ton of field work yesterday. I did a ton of putting. My approach shots were so beautiful. And I got like one bogey. And I was like, yes. Like I finally feel like I'm able to play the course and no that I don't have to think about my finger. Like I can just think about like throwing the disc again, even though the discs that I'm throwing are different because not all the discs felt good in my hand yesterday, but I was able to do it. And then we get to what is hole four in the course. I took a seven and it was from making bad decisions. It is just a tough hole. Like it's not very cleared out. There's not a lot of room to throw again. And you have to keep putting yourself in really good spots because it's a really long par five. And so I don't like that hole. I got to that hole and then everything just fell apart after that. And at that point, it had also started raining. The conditions were very wet. I didn't know like what I was doing. And my glue started to feel different and it shifted a little bit, cracked a little bit more and I could feel my finger again. And my body did the same thing that I did on day one. 10 strokes to my scorecard like in five holes because I'd go to putt and it would hurt so I would grip lock it well not maybe grip lock it but like hold on to it a little bit longer my same thing with approach shot well like little Anheuser approach shots that I had been doing really well all day with and then they just came out early because I couldn't hang on to them because it hurt and I'm like at that point, I'm mad, I'm frustrated, I'm sad. I don't have the strength to make a goal in my head. Well, if I'm gonna play like this, I'm gonna be the best card mate these girls have ever had. I just like couldn't bring myself to be like, all right, keep fighting, keep going. Like, I was so over it. And honestly, I'm not proud of that because I want to be able to have like that mental strength. Just got to the point with this whole thing where I texted Paul and was like, I just wanna go home. I don't wanna rep my represent myself this way. And like, it sucks because I come off the course and everyone's like waiting there and they're like, 
like, how'd you do? Like, how are you? Because people know who I am and they care and they're like, what's happening to you? My card mates were excellent. They just let me be. I wasn't like angry. I wasn't breaking things and hurting myself. You know, I wasn't doing anything like that, but I was very angry and I just got really quiet and just needed to be quiet. I just wanted this so much. Like I, I literally was so excited to come out here and felt really good about my practice. Pushed myself during practice, put in the work, you know, even when I didn't feel like it and I really wanted this vlog to be like a lot more upbeat and fun. I obviously want to do more vlogs in the future. They are kind of cringe when you're making them, but then I feel like when I edit them all together, I'm always happy that I filmed and told the stories and all this stuff. So hopefully you guys like this content. If you do, please subscribe. I really want to use this channel as just a place to tell my story and to share a little bit about my behind the scenes. Obviously, if you guys are fans of Paul, a lot of my story and behind the scenes has to do with him because we're married. But yeah, if you've ever been in this situation, just know that you're not alone and I think my words of affirmation that I'm going to tell myself is just this isn't who you are you're not this golfer you could have done so much better but things are out of your control and you did what you could and now you can be even stronger because of what you've gone through this weekend and so I just have to move on and try to use this as fuel for the next tournaments hopefully you guys are doing better in your tournaments I want to know how you're doing and I also want to do like a giveaway I have a Paul Macbeth starter pack I want to give it away to someone who's subscribed to me and following me so leave a comment of some words of wisdom or a tournament where this has maybe happened to you and i want to read about it and continue learning and growing so thank you guys so much for watching and i'll see you on the next one